Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to talk about polynomial inequalities. The most important thing for you to know is that this code over here, less than zero or even less than equal to zero, greater than, greater than zero, all refers to above or below the x-axis. All we're going to do is graph the polynomial over here. Now this one is already factored for you, but most of them aren't. We're going to graph the polynomial over here and look at where the graph is below the x-axis. It's that easy. So let's start. I'm going to go to y equals and I am going to write down what I see, parentheses, x minus 4, parentheses closed, parentheses open, x plus 1, parentheses closed. Now I'm going to graph. Okay, and I'm going to make the graph bigger by using what's called a detached LCD. Here it is. Okay, now we're looking for where is the graph below the x-axis. Well, the graph is below the x-axis here. And when we say where is the graph below the x-axis, we're talking about the street address. That is where on the x-axis. Between what numbers on the x-axis is the graph below the x-axis? Well, if we look up here at the factors, remember if you set each factor equal to zero and solve for x, our two x-intercepts are going to be 4, 0 and negative 1, 0. And so I would say that between negative 1 and positive 4 on the x-axis, the graph is below the x-axis, and it's strictly below. It's not touching the x-axis, it's strictly below the x-axis between negative 1 and 4, and so I'll be using parentheses. And I'll choose a point, and I will say between negative 1 and positive 4. And I'm going to check my answer, and I'm told I did well, and so I'm going to move on to number 33. We have a polynomial on the left, which is not factored, no problem. And we have this code, which means we're looking for where is it above the x-axis. So let's go look. I'm going to clear that. And I'm going to type in x squared minus 14x plus 45. And I'm going to graph that. and we're looking for above the x-axis. So I'm going to move the window over, um, over to the right. I had to stop and check my message. I like to throw history into my, um, into my videos, and this is the day when we're supposed to have an answer. Will the House of Representatives and the United States Senate reach an agreement so that the government shutdown will end and default won't begin tomorrow on Thursday. All of us are waiting with bated breath. Nobody knows anything yet. All right, because it's 1045 a.m. Central Time, let us move along. I'm going to move my window over to the right. So my x min will be negative 5 but I'm going to change my x max to 15. Let's see if that is sufficient. Yeah, that's a little better. Now, it looks for all the world like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right. Um, the graph is going to be above the x-axis to the left of 5 and to the right of this x-intercept, let's see what it is. 6, 7, 8, 9. Is that what it looks like to you? 9 and to the right. So I'm going to come over here 
and I'm going to say negative infinity to 5 and then I'm going to move to the right I'm going to choose union then I'm going to choose um, th this interval notation with parentheses because this is a strict inequality um, and then I'm going to say from 9 to infinity now notice I didn't factor now I could be wrong so be prepared it might be like 4.9 or something so let's see ah good it let us eyeball it alright this is where the graph is above the x-axis that is to the left of 5 and to the right of 9 but not including 5 or 9 because those are the actual x-intercepts where the graph actually touches the x-axis where the graph actually equals 0 and there is no equals bar under here let's move on to the next one aha this is where it gets tricky we see x squared minus x minus 24 is greater than or equal to x minus 9 there is a way to do it like that but I say why make life hard for ourselves I'm going to hit delete no I'm not I'm going to hit clear dumb okay so now I'm going to pull over my writing sheet and I'm going to write what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a zero over here to do that I'll have to subtract X from both sides and I will have to add 9 to both sides so I'll have x square whoop there we go x square minus x minus 24 minus another x plus 9 is greater than or equal to 0 that means we're going to be using brackets and we're going to be including the x intercepts okay this will give me x square minus 2 x now we've got minus 24 plus 9 this will be minus 15 is greater than or equal to 0 let's graph that x square minus 2x minus 15 graph whoa I don't even have to move my um, uh, my window alright this graph is going to be above the x-axis to the left of they still appear to be letting us eyeball this to the left of negative 3 but this time it's going to actually include negative 3 so what I see is negative infinity to negative 3 is one area of the x-axis where the graph is above the x-axis and then over or on yes or on the x-axis and then over here 1 2 3 4 5 now I'm taking a chance by not factoring so be aware of that um, 1 2 3 4 5 and it appears to also be bracket 5 to positive infinity and I'll put a U between them and I'll see if I am correct alright I'm going to click here and I'm going to look for more and I'm going to look and see ah okay I have a bracket although there's one on my keyboard but what the heck let's use this I'll have bracket and negative infinity comma uh, what did we say negative 3 oh darn never ever put a bracket around uh, an, an infinity sign here we go alright then right 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 I'm going to put a bracket and then I'm going to put a U 
and then I'm going to put a bracket and I'm going to say 5 to infinity. So 5 comma positive infinity parenthesis. There we go. Let's see if this is correct. Yes. Eventually, you know, we're going to have to factor this. There's no way around it. Here we have x squared is greater than 81. What to do? Pull the 81 over. Okay, so we'll have x squared minus 81 is greater than or equal to 0. Let's write under here. x squared is greater than 81. Oop, 81. So I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides of the inequality. That will give me x squared minus 81 is greater than 0. I can factor that. This would just be factored by the difference of two squares. x plus 9 times x minus 9 is greater than 0. Set each factor equal to 0. x plus 9 equals 0. x minus 9 equals 0. And so we'll have the answers x equals negative 9, x equals positive 9, those are the zeros of the function. But right now, of course, I could graph this, and I'm going to. But we are going to have to radically change the window. x squared minus 81. Now, I'm, I know that 81 is way up there, but let's see. Let's see, I am going to zoom 6 to get a centered screen again. There we go. Okay. Now, you know that this is a parabola, and it's a cupped up parabola. But I am going to uh, move out a little bit. How about that? Let's just move out a little bit. We'll say negative 20 to positive 20. Let's see if that's better. Just to see a little better. Okay, and I'm not going to go all the way down where this loops around and comes back up. What we're looking for is where is the graph above the x-axis? So it's going to be above the x-axis to the left of negative 9 and to the right of positive 9. But notice that there is no equals to bar, so we're not actually including negative 9 and positive 9 in our answer. Okay, click on the answer box. Uh, there we go. So I'll have negative infinity and then negative 9. Move to the right, union and then parentheses again, positive 9 to positive infinity. I'll check my answer, and I'm correct. So you're getting the idea of how this works. Although we've had all quadratics so far, there we're going to have a cup-down quadratic, but you can do that. Let's look for something that's a little more interesting. Ah. There we go. Now we have a cubic. Cubics are more interesting. And we're going to subtract 15x from both sides. OK. And this will entail some factoring also. So I'm going to move my paper over and down. All right, we're done with this. So I'm going to kind of put a slash through it. So I'll have 2x to the third minus x squared minus 15x is less than or equal to 0. So we're looking for where this graph is going to be below the x-axis or touching the x-axis. Let's graph it. 
see this is going to move over while I mouse I think let's see clear all right we're going to have 2 x to the third minus x square minus 15x and we're going to graph that. Okay, I need to hone in on this a little bit. So, let's see. I'm going to go back to negative 10, positive 10, but this time I'm going to make the screen go higher and lower, so I'll change y min to negative 20 and y max to positive 20 and graph. There's what it looks like. All right, typical cubic. Down on the left, up on the right, and we're looking for where this lovely little baby is going to be above and below the x-axis. So let's find our zeros. Let's see. Where? I want to detach the screen. I'm going to have to move things around a little bit so I can find the screen. There it is. Here's what it looks like. And it looks like we're going to have fraction zeros at least here. So let's see what we get. I'm going to factor. First, there is clearly an x in each term, so I pull that out as a GCF. Now I want to factor this. I could factor it by grouping, but I bet most of you are going to factor by uh, the quadratic formula. So let's do that, and I feel like singing today. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, I know I promised not to sing, but ha ha. Never trust a teacher. Okay, a is going to be 2, b is going to be negative 1, and c is going to be negative 15. So we'll have x equals negative, negative 1, plus or minus the square root of parentheses negative 1 squared. Put that negative number, that negative b, put it in parentheses every time. Otherwise you'll make a terrible error and the world will come to an end. We'll go into default. The House and the Senate won't reach an agreement. Um, dogs and cats will start mating. I mean you never know what's going to happen when everything falls apart. So always put parentheses around your negative b and life will remain happy and secure. All right, A is 2 and C is negative 15 over 2 times 2. Terrific. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as x equals positive 1, negative, negative is positive, plus or minus the square root of, and I know I'll have a 4 on the bottom, I'm going to find out what that is by using my calculator. So I'm going to say parentheses, negative 1, parentheses closed, squared, minus 4, parentheses, 2, parentheses closed, parentheses open, negative 15, parentheses, closed, and then I'm going to say enter. 121, yay, it's a perfect square. I know what the square root of 121 is, but if you don't know what the square root of 121 is, just do this. 
second x squared. And then, what if this were some long, ugly number and you wanted to get a calculator approximation of it? No problem. Look down here at answer above the negative key. Push second negative and you'll get your previous answer. And the answer is 11. 11 is the square root of 121. So, this will be 1 plus or minus 11. Notice once we take the square root, there isn't a radical any longer when, there's a, a, when it's a perfect square. That means x is going to equal 1 minus 11 over 4, and x is going to equal 1 plus 11 over 4. 1 minus 11 over 4 is going to be negative 10 over 4, which will be negative 5 over 2. And that was our left x-intercept, our left 0. All right, meanwhile, this is going to be 12 over 4, which is 3. So are there two zeros? No. Remember the first one. x equals 0. And then we set this factor equal to 0. And we got two answers for this polynomial right here. But don't forget your x equals 0. There are three x-intercepts. And now we know what they are. Let's go back to our graph. This is negative 5 over 2. This is 0, and this is 3. So now, what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find where my graph is below the x-axis or uh, actually on the x-axis. And so, I would say to the left of negative 5 over 2, including negative 5 over 2, then it's above the x-axis, which is not going to be part of our answer. Then from 0 to 3, the graph is below the x-axis. So this is going to be my answer. And this is going to disappear once I click on the answer box there. That's very annoying to me, but I'll have to live with it. All right, I'm going to have parentheses. negative infinity comma fra ah negative now actually let's do this the easy way 5 divided by 2 see i love the way it does that you students taught me that i used to only use the fraction tool okay and i ah i almost closed with parentheses but we're looking for less than or equal to, which means we're actually including the zeros. We're actually including the x-intercepts. So I'm going to put a bracket. And then I'm going to put a u. And then I'm going to put a bracket. And then a 3. Uh-uh-uh. And then a 0. Right? We're looking for below the x-axis. So from 0 on the x-axis, to 3 on the x-axis, the graph is below the x-axis. So I'll have 0, comma, 3, and then a bracket. Whew, that's a lot of movement. Let's see, that was a parenthesis, wasn't it? I hope it was. Check answer. Yes! Whew! Okay. This is the whole story, the whole long story, which is really easy if you use a graphing calculator, of finding out where the graph is above or below the x-axis 
All you have to do is look at your graphing calculator and find the x-intercepts, or if you prefer, the zeros. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.